Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing about Cassegrain antenna, um, the aperture blocking in Cassegrain antenna, polarization twist reflector, and uh, about Gregorian antenna and parabolic cylinder. So let us start with Cassegrain antenna. So in the last video, we saw the various feeds which could be used in parabolic reflector antennas, which are rear feed and the front feed and feed with off feed which is offset from the paraboloid axis. And then we saw the cross polarizations uh, in the offset, single reflector offset feed can be reduced if we uh, use a dual reflector antenna. So this Cassegrain antenna is a dual reflector antenna where which in which the feed is at or near the vertex of the parabola rather than at its focus. So this feed which is placed can be either at the vertex or in front of it. Okay. Now the pr larger primary reflector that is this one has a parabolic contour and the secondary reflector this one it is called as the sub reflector this has a hyperbolic contour. So one of the foci of this hyperbola is the real focal point of the system. The feed is located at this point and this can be either at the vertex of the parabola and usually it is not exactly at the vertex it is placed in front of it. Okay now the parallel rays which are coming from the uh, target like this if somewhere here so this parallel rays which are coming from the target okay they are reflected by this parabola okay uh, and then it becomes a convergent beam and then they are re-reflected uh, re-reflected by this hyperbolic sub-reflector and then they converge at a position of the feed here okay so this is how the Cassegrain antenna works so this sub reflector okay so suppose uh, we have a larger sub reflector okay this one hyperboloid so and it, if this sub reflector is larger it should be nearer to the primary sub reflector okay so what happens is the axial dimension will be shorter okay if this sub reflector is larger it becomes nearer to the primary reflector and then the axial dimensions become shorter but then when you have a large sub reflector what happens is your aperture blockage increases which is not good right it is not a desired uh, feature okay so another uh, option is to have a smaller sub reflector which uh, reduces the aperture blockage but then it has to be supported at a greater distance from the primary reflector. Okay, so these are the two options. These are the two options, but then both the options have their own challenges. Now, the main advantage of this Cassegrain design is that the feed is placed at this point. Now, what is the advantage of having feed here? Okay, and not in front of the reflector surface. It is easy uh, that is the flexibility of the design increases. Uh, there is no need for long transmission lines out of the feed, which is suppose the feed is placed here, there would be long transmission lines for the supports, right? So if the feed is placed here, that need for the long transmission lines is uh, not required, right? So that is gone. So that is one advantage. Another advantage is the flexibility which this design gives. So the flexibility is that the feed, feed is placed here and then you can uh, get the sum and difference pattern which is required for monopulse tracking radars. You can easily get it at the back of the reflector, behind the reflector, right? Because the feed is placed here. So, you, so hence this design is usually popular among in monopulse tracking radars because in monopulse tracking radars as we saw in module 4, we need a sum and difference pattern. Some pattern is required for range signal and difference pattern is required for the angle errors, right? So in order to get the sum and difference pattern, uh, if you have a feed which is here, it is easy for us to collect those patterns behind, from behind the reflector itself. So that will, uh, that will not contribute to any of the aperture blocking issues, okay? So hence this design is very popular in monopulse tracking radars. 
and another thing is the noise temperature antenna noise temperature of this cassie grain configuration is usually lesser than that of the antennas which have feeds placed at the focus that is the front feed configuration okay and another thing is the side loads caused by the spillover of the feed radiation from this sub reflectors spillover is when the radiation are missing the primary reflector so the side loads which are caused by the spillover of the feed radiations from the sub reflector is usually uh, less okay so that are the features of cassie grain antenna now aperture blockage in the cassie grain antenna is usually uh, reduced by the size of the by decreasing the size of this sub reflector okay so it was found that minimum total aperture blockage occurs when the area of the sub reflector and the projected area of the speed are equal so that was one uh, uh, one observation which was made okay in this cassie grain antenna design so here which you see are the real time uh, examples of cassie grain antenna you can see the feed is here and the uh, sub reflector is placed here only thing is the support might cause the blockage so this is another cassie grain antenna yeah so this is the figure which you have in your textbook so this is the cassie grain antenna feed which is placed at the vertex and the uh, sub reflector here so with a hyperbolic contour okay so this is also the same thing which doesn't show the reflection okay so this is the virtual focal point and then along that we have a real focal point here so this is the point where you are supposed to keep the feed okay so this is the geometry of cassie grain and now another um, design is polarization twisting cassie grain antenna so why do we go for this design so the problem is still because of the sub reflector you still have some aperture blockage right here this point so if uh, the uh, radiation coming from the feed hitting the primary pattern is reaching here this one second yeah so the reflections which are hitting like this right so this will not come out because it is on this surface right so still there is some aperture blockage so how can we reduce this aperture blockage in this cassie grain antenna design that is using polarization twist reflector okay so we have this configuration polarization twist reflector so to reduce the aperture blocking if the antenna permits the antenna uh, the application so if if somehow we have a design which permits the antenna to operate in only one single polarization then we can reduce the aperture blocking so here in this polarization twisting cassie grain antenna we have a sub reflector with a polarization dependent surface okay so this rough sub reflector consists of a horizontal grating of wires which are called as trans reflector okay so it is called as trans reflector t r a n s trans reflector so it is the horizontal grating of wires in the sub reflector so what this uh, trans reflector does is it will pass the vertically polarized you can see here so you can it will pass the vertically polarized radiation with no attenuation but it will reflect the horizontally polarized polarization radiated from the feed so the uh, radiation which is coming from this feed it will it might have vertical as well as horizontal right so all the vertical polarization uh, signals will pass through but all the horizontal horizontally polarized waves will get reflected okay so so if the whole horizontal polarized waves have come here it will be reflected and then it will hit the primary so so at the primary reflector we have two things so this primary reflector is uh, designed in such a way that the horizontally polarized radiated uh, reflections which are reflecting this primary surface reflected by this uh, sub reflector which are reaching this primary surface is rotated 90 degree okay so it is rotated 90 degree by this twist reflector so how is it becoming like that so this twist reflector consists of wires which are oriented 45 degree to the incident polarization and they are placed so it is not actually seen so this wires okay so the wires which are oriented 45 degree are uh, placed one quarter wavelength that is lambda by 
so it is placed lambda by 4 apart okay so it is placed uh, lambda by 4 apart from the reflecting surface so these two together we know that lambda by 4 will always give you a 45 degree change right in the polarization so together they contribute to give a 90 degree change in the twist in the polarization so now what happens half of the energy which is incident on the wires get oriented 45 degree or uh, wires oriented at 45 degree passes through the grating and the other half is reflected okay so uh, then again this lambda by 4 spacing is going to give you another 45 degree and then hence whatever horizontally polarized waves have come here reached here after reflecting the subreflector will become again vertically polarized right so this is how only the vertically polarized waves come out of this uh, reflecting surface okay so when combined together this 45 degree and the lambda by 4 distance the the resultant polarization is again rotated 90 degree and hence it is vertically polarized so this vertically polarized component is perpendicular to horizontal uh, horizontal wire grid of this sub reflector and then it passes through through it right so the horizontally polarized waves which have come from the feed gets reflected by the sub, sub reflector because it passes only vertically polarized waves and then it gets reflect gets it uh, hits this uh, twist reflector again it gets vertically polarized and then it passes through the sub reflector easily so hence this sub reflector is not going to give you any aperture blockage so this is the advantage of having twist reflector and the trans reflector so the polarization sorry the aperture blocking issues which was there in the cassegrain antenna design is removed because of this design okay now next is gregorian antenna so that is not in detail available there in the textbook it's not required for your syllabus in detail so i'll just give you an idea about this so in cassegrain antenna we have a hyperboloid contour here so the sub reflector right in gregorian antenna this also uses a dual reflector similar to the cassegrain the only thing is the sub reflector is a ellipsoid okay so this ellipsoid lies beyond the focus of the paraboloid instead of closer to it as in the cassegrain antenna here okay so that is gregorian antenna you can see here so this is gregorian antenna with the concave uh, secondary reflector like this right so in the cassegrain it was the other next is parabolic cylinder so other way to get asymmetrical antenna pattern is parabolic is the use of parabolic cylinder okay so here you can see it this is a parabolic cylinder so in this the antenna surface is generated by moving a parabolic contour like this parallel to itself okay so there are parabolic contour which has parallel to itself and then at the feed you have a line source you can see here a line source like for example a linear array can be used here okay which this array is located at the focus point so since it is a parabolic contour parallel to itself there will be a line of focal point correct so there will be a linear array which is located at the focus of the cylinder which is used to eliminate the parabolic cylinder reflector okay so the beam shape and the beam width in this plane uh, of which contains this linear feed is determined by the illumination of the illumination of the line source feed okay now so these this is uh, uh, h plane array which is used as the feed here this is e plane array as per the polarization you can use it and the, here is an example where horn array is used as the feed point okay so this is a line source which is used as the feed so this is a parabolic so these are the figures which i have obtained in google so parabolic sheet and the at the focus point you have a line source driven radiator at the focus of the parabola so that's the real time scenario which you have in uh, show which is shown in textbook okay so in tps 63 air surveillance radar which is used so you can see a parabolic cylinder with a which a feed here okay so that is about parabolic cylinder so this parabolic cylinder can generate a symmetrical fan beam with much larger ratio of the two orthogonal beam widths okay than 
section of the paraboloid. So section of the paraboloid is also supposed to give fan B, right? So this parabolic cylinder gives much better asymmetrical fan B with more larger ratio of the orthogonal B index. Okay, so that is one advantage. Uh, another thing is usually less depolarization on reflection from a parabolic cylinder is obtained than from a parabola, paraboloid. Okay. Yeah, so these are the advantages. So that's all about the various uh, reflector antennas. So after this, we have electronically steered phased array antennas as the next topic, which will be dealt in the next video. Thank you.